Well, Sonic Rituals have changed, and now they have a level 9 and a level 10. So I decided to create some free-to-play friendly teams that were also quite fast. Now I'll go over each one, but I'll also talk about my approach, just in case you want to create one of your own or take this as inspiration. In case you want to jump to the boss that you're farming, I'll include timestamps below for each one. So let's sort of get into it, starting with Infernus. Now this boss isn't really too bad, all we want to do is hit them as hard as we can. And to make them run a little bit faster, we're going to control the gauge a bit more. And the Azure Dragon is perfect for this job. Speed break, AP gauge push, and also tons of damage. Next up we're using Sahua because her buffs are every 3 turns, which means we can have them more consistently up between the different waves. Next we're using Stuart, who has great single target damage, but can be replaced by any DPS Esper. Next we're using Red Twin, who does everything you want, defense break, speed break, and seer. Also, Resident 6, it gives your entire team crit rate up. And lastly, we're using Sander, who's actually built quite slow, and that's because of the boss, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Now, you'll see the timing as we go into it, and that kind of shows you what's really going on here. As you can see, Sahua goes first for the buff, then Twin goes to defense break, and then the damage follows. And you see that Sander actually doesn't get a turn here, it's because we're saving his ultimate for the boss. Now you may have noticed, but Sahua and Twin are both twice the speed of Sander. By tuning our speed this way, we're actually giving us maximum damage against the boss. So you can see the defense break here, and then you can see Sander push the gauge back, allowing our DPS units to take the lead once again. So now we have a speed broke, defense broke, seared boss, who's just going to take all the damage that we can possibly dish out, while Dragon also loops around to do more damage. And lastly, Stuart goes just to finish the fight. Now the idea here is to cut back on time and to make the run faster, we actually control the gauge of the boss, particularly by using Sander at the last moment. And this team clears 10 out of 10, no problems whatsoever. So this is Windstriker, and he seems to have quite a bit of HP, so we're just going to go ahead and poison him. So the time on this one varies quite a bit, and the reason why is because sometimes the boss never actually gets to take a turn, which means the damage doesn't actually go into effect. So we're actually keeping our Sander at a lower accuracy to prevent that from happening. And then we have Akara, built as fast as possible to apply poison as often as possible. You don't really need this speed, but I decided to do it anyways because I'm going for that quick time. Now if you don't feel like the team is stable enough, just use Meredith instead of Sander. She'll give you a lot of stability in all of her healing. So this was actually the final level of my multi battle. I just wanted to test it before I recommended it, and it worked really well. And this team is actually built very fast. You don't need any speed on haul whatsoever, and you should be able to clear everything really nicely. It just comes down to will the boss take a turn, and how many poisons does the boss have on them. And luckily you get to see that in action now. So the worst case scenario, and the major deviation in time for this run, is basically just because the boss might never actually get a turn. You may just do normal damage to him until the end. It needs a bit more testing, but an argument can be made that Sander needs to be on zero accuracy. Now there are a lot of variations to this build. If you don't feel like it's stable, add a healer. If you want to add more damage, if you want to do something else, if you have Aoife, go and add her in. You can do so much with it. And there you go. You can kind of do whatever you want with the team. It's super flexible. So this is one of my favorite bosses because you can just cheese it. The mechanic is that the boss heals up a lot on his turns unless you apply disease to him. And Kara can also apply poison. So we just abuse that fact. Now she has an accuracy lead, meaning that you can free up a lot of relic pressure by swapping accuracy stats for speed. And since you're depending on her poison to do damage, you don't need to build any offensive stats on her either. So you end up just stacking HP and speed and make sure you have 40% accuracy on her. And then you just 1v1 the boss. And as long as you apply your disease, you don't have to worry about a single thing. I think this kind of shows that sometimes there are just the right espers for the job. And sometimes you don't really need to overthink fighting a boss or setting up a team. Now, she does have good relics, and that is a distinct advantage when you're going to build things. But if she can just solo it, 
That means that you can kind of put whoever you want as supporting cast to what she does in this fight. And for me, it felt really good just to beat this solo. Like, it is the first time I've ever done that against a boss. Even a small one like this, I still count it. But anyways, the build's actually really fast. And much faster than most people will do it. And this is the last build, Shimmerer. And this one actually requires a lot of timing. And you'll notice that by the lineup. And it is really dependent on a certain number of things. Now, don't get me wrong. You can beat this boss really easy. But if you want to do it really fast, you have to have the right turn order to get things done. Now, a lot of these espers can be replaced. We just really want damage heavy espers. But the biggest thing is to apply a buff blocker to the boss and to be able to get rid of the shield that the first little stage has. Luckily, Chloe is perfect for removing the shield on this little minion, and you can see that here. You can see how big that shield is on her health bar. Then we follow up with the defense break and a ton of damage, and you can see that we actually save Sander's ultimate for the boss. Now, applying buff blocker here is vital to speedrunning this, because the boss will cleanse himself and get a huge shield on. Now we're using the Sander ultimate to push the boss's gauge back and allow the rest of our team to go next. And you can see, we have the defense break now, everyone has crit up, and we can just do all the damage that we need to immediately. Now just keep the turn order in mind, we want to have Chloe to strip the first minion and apply a buff blocker to the boss. Then the rest is just damage and defense breaking. Well, that was fast and pretty easy to be honest. And this build is also very safe. You don't have to worry about it once you get the timing down. It'll just run. Well, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe.